This is from Maine with Love and Allagash Brewing. Oh, an Allagash Brewing podcast where we talk <laughs> about beer, our community here in Maine, and things that generally make us happy. I personally had a great time again, as always, recording yeah. this one. Yeah, we, Patrick and Jason are just, you know, yeah, they're great people. They're awesome. So. Patrick is an R&D brewer here at Allagash. Jason is our brewmaster. And uh, we just chatted with them all about a new beer we have coming out here called Hop Reach IPA, uh, coming out January 2023. And, um, you know, it's just a fascinating look into the h- how sort of in-depth we went into the process of trying, brewing all sorts of different versions, getting feedback from yeah. the entire company to kind of come up with what we view as, like, our ideal IPA. And... Yeah, I think it's amazing to sort of reflect on all of the trial batches and the feedback that they had to sift through uh, to get to the the IPA that we will be releasing soon. Yeah, and it also, I mean, the way they describe it, it sounds really dang delicious. I wasn't, they were drinking it. I wasn't drinking it, unfortunately. They only didn't have enough. <laughs> maybe, they, maybe they had enough. I don't know. They excluded it's me. Also fairly early <laughs> in the morning. It's 9.30 in the morning. I would have had a sip. Me too. Um but uh, no, it's uh, it really cool to hear all about that process. So if that sounds interesting to you, then give it a listen. I'm Brett Willis, work on the marketing team here, joined by in person for the first time in our podcasting history, uh, Liz Wilson. Good morning. Good morning. Jason Perkins, our brewmaster. Good morning. Good morning. And Patrick Chavanel, our technical R&D brewer. Is that still the correct title? Is there a different? Uh, there's a different one, technically, <laughs> I guess. But I don't know. I don't care. Technically. He's a really good brewer. Um, and so today, this is the first of a three-part uh, series of podcasts that we're doing that's all about a special new beer coming in 2023. Uh, it's a beer that you know we're all super excited about, and it's going to become part of our year-round lineup. And that beer is called Hopreach IPA. And in this podcast, we're going to chat with Jason and Patrick uh, about how they, with the help of everyone here at Algash, came to the exact recipe for this tasty beer. But before we get into the beer, we got to ask the questions, the special questions. So, uh, Patrick, oh God. what's First. the best? What's the best canned fish? Oh, canned fish. You know what? I eat it. Four times a week, <laughs> and I couldn't tell you what the name of it is. Uh, I, I could tell you a little idea. bit about it. It's two dollars and fifty cents. <laughs> okay, good, good. Um, you can't get the skinless, boneless version because mm. that's just garbage. Okay, kind of need those little bones in there for some texture. Sure. Uh, and it's sardines. So that's all I know about it. In olive oil too. Okay, that's, that's the key as yeah. well. Uh, any fish in water, pff, garbage. Okay. When um, eating your weekly allotment of tin fish? <laughs> is it an allotment? Is that what know. it is? Um, <laughs> is it? Is this your lunch? Or are you? It's a, It's break every, break? Yeah, it's what I bring to work for lunch every day. It's a combination of things. Who is told you to ask? I was going to say, did you know that he ate canned fish? Because oh, that yeah. was an amazing response. If you would ask me that question, it would have been. <laughs> Nothing but silence. No, we talked about the canned fish. Well, I, I've yeah. seen you eat. You eat it four times a week, so I see you here at the brewery. So, yeah, you know. it's a, it's a, it's not just canned fish. <laughs> it's like not like I'm a cat or something. No, it's, it's, true, yeah. it's a combination of ingredients. <laughs> to it's more of a dish. Oh, I'm just I fish admire on it. its own. I honestly admire it. I feel like I eat like a like a like a three year old. Like I literally eat like a piece of bread and a piece of cheese with like <laughs> yeah. no mayo or anything. And you're there eating your nice fish, and I just I. Well, I mean, that that's what I mostly eat. Aside from that, I am the family garbage disposal. Okay. So I'll eat any of the leftovers that anyone else in the family won't go. eat, which is generally a lot. Yeah. So any, children. any box of cereal that's a partial or or anything that's been <laughs> kicking around for a few days in the fridge. No one likes leftovers in the house. Like, our, our kids love mac and cheese. Yep. Day old mac and cheese. Total garbage. Yep. I, I'm in the same boat. Sure. I don't get it. So... <laughs> Next time you buy some of those, you buy you buy an extra one for me. I oh yeah, give them a try. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. We'll have a little uh, yeah, a little sardine. The next thing. podcast. Yeah, there you go. We can talk about sardines more. Uh, all right, Jason. Uh, you take a. I know you've taken a couple trips up to the Allagash Wilderness Waterway. What is your kind of favorite spot along there? 
Oh, good it doesn't question. Have to be like a, it doesn't have to be like a camping. It could be like, you know, a camping place, but I feel like just some area in the Allagash. Oh, man. There's several amazing spots. The first one that came to mind was Chase Rapids, which is, you know, where we started as a company when we did our company trip. It's not, it's, some people consider it more of the middle of the waterway, but mm. it's just this great section of Rapids and fun, a fun way to, it, it's really the only section of like, I guess I could somewhat serious Rapids. But, sure. But um, that's more of like the exciting area. But, um, you know, some of the really other campsites just so, so peaceful. Um, such, such great spots. All It's hard to pick one, to be honest. I could totally There's see so that. There's so many great spots. I could totally see that. Yeah, it's pretty idyllic. Uh, you might hear some background noise. That's because we're literally in a brewery and we're in our brewery. And so uh, if you hear some music, uh, that's the uh, packaging line packaging yeah. up beer. So let's get in the meat of it. Yeah. We're brewing an IPA to add to our year-round lineup. So to kind of back up, can you give a little context around our history with IPAs? Yeah, I mean, we've, we've I guess the first IPA we made uh, was a beer called Hugh Malone, which we made back in 2007, I believe. Mm. Um, and that was just a specialty release, but, you know, much different company back then. We were, you know, only had a couple core year round core beers, three year round core beers. And then especially beers were, you know, we did one or two a year kind of thing, much different than what we're doing now. And, uh, Hugh Malone was the first one. So we, you know, we called it a Belgian style IPA, but, um, it did, it did use a Belgian yeast, but, uh, very much a hop forward beer. And mm. we made that beer every year for many years to come after that. I honestly don't remember when we stopped making it, but that was the first one we ever made. Um, and then we've had a handful of other ones over the years that we've made swiftly was just recently one we did this earlier this year. Uh, and then, you know, we've done, um, you know, we did bread IPA is another one we've done in the past. Oh yeah. So we've, we've in theory been doing IPAs to some level since 2007. Um, just nothing on a, on a national year round release scale. Totally. Thinking just, sorry, this is an aside, but, uh, I had bread IPA at my wedding. Uh, and it's, uh, Brett refers to the uh, yeast strain Britannomyces. It's not my name, but, uh, there were a lot of people at that <laughs> wedding. I'd been working at Allagash for maybe like a year who were like, man, Brett's moving up in that yeah, company. He's right. got his own beer. So it was, uh, it was good. Um, yeah. yeah. And I feel like we also have the hot pilot program too. That is a lot of That's trial right. and research into hops. Yeah, definitely. So for that, we take... Uh, an existing beer we make here and transfer a, a, a portion into another tank and then basically dry hop the hell out of it uh, with typically uh, more experimental varieties. Um, they've kind of leaned more towards publicly available varieties too. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just another way for us to to get a look at and a feel for uh, what a particular hop would mm-hmm. lend to, to beer. Um, so we've done a few of those. Uh, they started as draft only, and we packaged, I think, two of them. Oh, man. It's hard to keep track of time yeah. <laughs> with these things. <laughs> Maybe three years ago or so, two, yeah. three years ago, uh, we packaged two different versions That's right. uh, of, of two. And uh, they were uh, HBC 472 and HBC 630. Wow. I was going to quiz yeah, you on Nailed that. it. You nailed it. That's oh. impressive. Or I just made those numbers up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to double check. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Um, yeah, I feel like it's really interesting to have them side by side, um, which was kind of cool when those two came out together. Because without doing the side by side, you're like, yeah, it's kind of a hoppy, a hoppy, tasty beer. <laughs> but when you taste them next to each other, it's like, oh, wow, there are some very different characteristics. Yeah, that was. I think that was kind of part of the the intention around doing two uh, using the same base beer because you're right. It's you know it's it's not just you know, oh, with a lot of the beers that we brew here, we focus and rely heavily on yeast to give character to those beers. Right. Um, but hops can do the same thing, and not all hops are the same. And uh, there there are ones that are a bit more expressive than others, like I don't know your Sabros of the world. Hmm that are super tropical coconut bombs um, and uh, some that might be more subtle, uh, like uh, more traditional uh, European style hops. Um, So having that sort of outlet uh, where you can compare the two using the same base beer was was pretty cool to do. And we should probably do something like that again at some point in the future. Yeah. 
that was yeah, it's fun. Yeah, agreed. And and as Patrick said, you know, these are uh, hops that are kind of early in the stage of development. And by early, you're still talking five or six years into the development of these hop varieties. But the reason they just have numbers is because they haven't they haven't been fully commercialized yet. So. Um, some of the suppliers who are and the breeders who are making them make them available for on the small scale to do these trials with and it's just a really fun way to see just the in, incredible range of hop aromas that can come from you know what people just yeah. think is hop and and those totally. aroma characteristics that can come through are incredibly broad yeah one of those um the hot pilot beers the it was like the blue version it was six something six thirty mm. that like I feel like that hop was a really interesting hop like it yeah. it provided what was it like almost like a vanilla e but also like a dried leaves or something that's not very doesn't sound very appetizing but it was an interesting <laughs> right wasn't there just I thought some it was really... like a piney woody I don't know I'm just making things making yeah, things I mean, <laughs> honestly with with all beers in general people can uh, perceive yeah. the same beer a little differently. Totally. So, you know, if you get uh, uh, like vanilla and, and you get pine, like there's nothing to say that there's anything wrong about that. Right. right. Um, that's what makes those beers so interesting. Totally. So we have that sort of background. We've been brewing sort of hoppy-ish beers, hoppier beers for a while, but then kind of now this decision was made. And so I guess for, for both of you, you know, Jason and Patrick, what was the first thing that went through your head when it was like, we're doing it, we're brewing a year-round IPA? Yeah, so uh, I would, I'll start, but I mean, it, it was it was a super exciting decision to make. So, you know, like I said, we've been making IPAs off and on over the years, mm-hmm. but you know, it's not something we have done on a national scale. And, um, you know, we made a decision in this case, and we can get into a little bit about the development of the beer specifically, yep. um, where we decided, okay, we're going to make an IPA. We want, this is time for us to do a year round IPA mm-hmm. and then let's get to work on it. Um, so it was a little different than a lot of our other beers, most of our beers, if not all of them that come through the pilot program, which we, you know, can talk a little bit more in detail about, but, um, you know, I had the just really good fortune to be able to be the one to go around and tell, um, you know, people like Patrick and the rest of the pilot team yeah. and the rest of our brewer team and so on that it was time to, to do this. And, it was super fun because I personally was incredibly excited. I mean, it's a beer style that it's, it's, there's a reason why it's the number one beer style in yeah, craft yeah. beer, yeah. but I can speak personally that it's a beer style that I really very much enjoy mm-hmm. and often talk about how, um, if I'm going out to a bar or a restaurant, you know, I'll always have an Allagash, of course, always, uh, mm-hmm. because I love our beer and because it's a good way to, you know, check on quality and all that kind of oh, good yeah. stuff. Oh, yeah. But often if I'm having a second beer, Often I'm reaching for an IPA from one of our our friend breweries because there's some fantastic ones out there. And so uh, it's a beer style I personally drink a fair bit of. And um, so just really excited to be able to make it our own. And then to be able to tell Patrick and the rest of the pilot team and just see the excitement build around the brewery as this that word got around was pretty, pretty awesome. Totally. How about you, Patrick? Oh, I was so stoked. <laughs> uh, it, and that's like that's an, an understatement. Uh, big time because you know when J Bone told me Jason, sorry, very good. Uh, oh, man, it's out of the bag. <laughs> <laughs> um, when I was told it was, you know, it's we had been doing some here and there, mm-hmm. piloting some here and there, but to be able to put a lot of time and energy and focus on a particular style is just it's really exciting. It's just a whole new challenge. Um, But that's not to say, you know, based on our history, we've done some. We also do some internal uh, R&D trials, um, and some of those are specifically revolving around hops, hop varieties, Mm -hmm. and exploring those internally and uh, creating internal descriptors on those. So, um, yeah, to say the least, I was extremely excited, and, uh, and I very soon realized how this was going to be a really big project and we needed to start working on it immediately <laughs> yep. Um, yep. because these sorts of things take a fair amount of time to get going and, uh, and brewing pilots and evaluating and so on and so forth. So uh, it was both excitement and um, some anxiety kind of mixed in a, in a way, um, but uh, more so just stoked for it in general. Totally. Yeah. And I feel like we can talk a little bit about it. You kind of, formed a subcommittee of people who are focusing on brewing IPA and um, it was 
the two of you and two others on our team. And then, so when you all first got together, um, you know, how did, how did you decide on what style of IPA we were going to brew? There's so many out there. We live in New England. Are we making a New England uh, hazy IPA? Like, yeah, how did, how did those first conversations go um, in deciding what type of IPA we were going we to try and hit? Yeah, I guess I, can, I, I guess I can start. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I referenced earlier the pilot program, and that's a whole other podcast. Yes. Literally. We did one with Patrick. Literally a whole sure other did. podcast. I heard it was like so, the best rated podcast. Yeah, really. I mean, so people just keep listening at, to it. It's, it's amazing. People stop me on the street. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> so I won't steal any thunder from that <laughs> awesome podcast. But in a nutshell, all of our beers come from this program where an individual employee suggests an idea and then we bring it to life. And that's the super short story. Um, in this particular case, like I mentioned, we we decided that and it was time to make an IPA. So yeah. it didn't necessarily, the idea didn't necessarily come from a person. Uh, it came from, and now it's time for us to do it. And so that's why we you know, formed this team with Patrick, myself, Zach Boda, our <laughs> quality manager, and Corey McNutt as one of our senior brewers. Mm. And the four of us kind of started. But that we were kind of the, I guess, the project team, if you will. Mm -hmm. Uh, and throughout the process, we wanted to involve the rest of the pilot team and, the, and really the rest of the staff, which we can get into. Mm -hmm. But to get back to your question, Liz, I, I really wanted to go into it with a fairly open mm -hmm. canvas because mm -hmm. I didn't want to limit the creativity of the team. I didn't want to come in and say, hey, guys, we're making a you know, super tropical forward 7.2% hazy IPA. Like, yep. What's the fun in that? I mean, not that we couldn't make that a great beer. We could, but I wanted to give as much freedom mm -hmm. in the process sure. as, as was possible. So the scaffold was pretty, the initial scaffold was pretty broad. Um, you know, in the six plus percent range mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and hop forward, basically it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then um, once we met as a team and started chatting, we found that our opinions were actually fairly aligned in the direction we wanted to go. Cool. Um, and the pilot team as well. And we kind of wanted, um, what we kind of decided was again, like this closer to 7%, which is where we ended up. But from a hop character, which is obviously the big defining component of a beer like this, is that we didn't want it to be one dimensional. We didn't want it mm -hmm. to be just piney, just citrus, just tropical. Um, we wanted it to kind of be a meld of all of those three, the, really those three components. And so that was the kind of target we developed. And then, from there, we made a whole bunch of IPAs. 17, I think. Pilot batches, oh right? 17. Yeah, yeah. It's Like I said, it was a pretty big project. It <laughs> took a, a fair amount of time. I mean, I mean, you could say 17 beers, and uh, you don't really get a sense or feel for how long that sort of thing takes because um, the way we went about it was in a number of like rounds, mm -hmm. where round one was four individual recipes um, that you know, take some time to brew and to ferment and to carbonate and to put on tap for the staff to evaluate, to then take that feedback and analyze it, and then having to decide how do we move forward from here. And that's just round one. Yeah. So yep. repeat that four times, and it's stretched out over the course of at least the first, oh man, six, seven months or so is, is how long that process uh, right. took us. Um, so it was a fair amount of time. The, the part that always just kind of fascinated me, like we have a little tree of the, you know, here's round one. And then we took like, you know, a version C and then we versioned it out into three different ones for the second round. Like, I guess, how did you go about deciding what parts to keep from a certain round and what parts to change? Uh, that's a great question. Um, so before you get into it, really, we kind of have to talk about the way in which we collected feedback right. on all of them. Right. Um, so we have a system in place for just pilots in general where we will put beers on tap for all staff to taste and, and analyze. We use a platform called Draft Lab mm -hmm. that will capture information, feedback. Um, a very simple, straightforward test is what we normally go for. It's a hedonic test. Mm -hmm. Essentially, you're 
tasting the beer and rating it on a scale of how much do you like it or how little do you like it or anywhere in between. Mm. Uh, there's a section for leaving comments. And, and again, that's just the normal feedback we get for any new pilot beer that goes on tap. We figured with this project being a bit different than our standard pilot beer, we wanted to kind of open up our feedback mechanisms. So not only did we do that, uh, and the beers were on tap for about a week, mm -hmm. we also wanted to have, well, so before I move on, I should say that that sort of feedback is, um, is unbiased feedback. So it's an, an individual tasting beer on their own by themselves uh, without any sort of outside influence on what they're tasting so that the feedback that we're receiving is just, you know, the thoughts from that specific individual without someone saying like, oh, don't you taste this? Don't you smell this? Uh, don't you hate this part? Uh, so, you know, those things. Um, that was me. That was me. I apologize. That's all good. Uh, so um, we wanted to have uh, a bit more of an, an open conversation uh, with everyone on the staff as well. So we also set up some what we called IPA socials where we had the beers pouring on tap at a different building uh, on our sites, and uh, we, we set aside you know an hour on a couple days where anyone that was interested uh, can come by, taste the beer, more so in like an open environment, uh, and openly talk about their likes and dislikes. Um, and with with that sort of situation, we were also from. Uh, you know, the small team perspective, able to communicate to others what our approach is and what we're, we're looking to achieve in a beer. And, and that way, that conversation could can lead to, um, you know, uh, some more, you know, open thoughts on, on what they think <laughs> and to see if there's some alignment in terms of what we are looking to get uh, out of the pilots versus uh, what someone is perceiving. Um, so just another way of, of collecting feedback in a way. Uh, and also there, there was this system that was involved in these of taking little tokens and you know once you're done tasting through all four, you can put a token into your favorite uh, IPA to see if that aligned with the feedback we were collecting from a draft lab perspective. So uh, that was uh, what we used to collect feedback. Uh, and then in terms of utilizing that feedback, that was... I'm not gonna, not gonna lie. It was a little challenging, yeah. at least initially. It's like, how do we make a decision yeah. based on all this information totally. we collected? I'm sure there was no shortage of opinions. I feel like you're saying it very nicely, <laughs> but well, we, and we wanted people's opinions. <laughs> you know, that's yeah. that's exactly what we were looking for. Yeah. We wanted to. We we were doing our best to involve anyone that yeah. wanted to be part of this process because right. and, you know one way that I I kind of like I still like uh, referring to like what we did is. Uh, it was more of like a brewery wide collaboration totally. um, than anything else, you know, because everyone is willing to or able to give feedback on these. And the feedback is obviously it's actually critical uh, in terms of where, you know, the, the chart that you're referring to, where yeah. those arrows then then lead in terms of like how certain beers get moved on from round one to round two and, and adjustments that are made. So I still haven't answered your question. I realize that. <laughs> it's, um, it's complicated. Yeah, 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 it's I should have just said that. I don't even remember what your question was, so I'm impressed that you do. So d I think it was something along the lines of how do we decide on how to move forward. Yeah. Uh, um, so it, it essentially, we, we took in that feedback, looked at it uh, as, as a small team, looked mm -hmm. at it with the pilot team, um, got that team's feedback as well, and then for the most part, based on what was the most liked beer, um, mm -hmm. we would then, and, and if there's a close one, uh, we would then use either one or both of those to then either rebrew entirely for the next round mm -hmm. to almost be used as a, a, a control in a sense. So a beer that was well liked that could be compared against with some changes for round two. Uh, and then, uh, you know, we can make some adjustments based on some other things as well. Yeah. Um, whether or not it was worth adding or subtracting different kinds of hops, uh, hop varieties, or the different types of hops. Yeah. Um, because once you start getting into the world of hops, it's, it's kind of incredible. Uh, not only are there hundreds of varieties that you can use, uh, all, like Jason was saying, could have uh, varying 
aromatic qualities, mm -hmm. characteristics, but then you can take the same variety and uh, have different types of that variety in terms right. of, is it a normal pellet? Is it a right. concentrated pellet? Is it an oil? Uh, is, that, uh, is it a flowable product that's added on the hot side? Is it a flowable product that's added on the cold side? And you know, within a variety, there are all these iterations that could lend to different characteristics in the beer. So it, it was a little overwhelming to try <laughs> to explore all of those options simultaneously uh, while we're brewing all these pilots. So, right. um, so yeah, it was a lot to take in, <laughs> but I, I think we did okay for the most part. I'm yeah, pretty it, pleased with where we you ended seem up. To have your, you seem to have yourself together. Yeah. You know, you didn't seem like you're <laughs> yeah. freaking out too hard. This yeah. is why I wear a hat all the time. I'm actually bald. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I wasn't yeah. to start the year, but <laughs> something happened. How do you? How close is the the IPA that we have now, Hop Reach, to any of the first batches? That's Ooh. a really great question. I don't know, J Bun. Do you want to take it? They just brewed the same exact batch <laughs> 17 times. Oh and man! No. I mean. <laughs> It's somewhat similar. That's the simple answer. I yeah. mean, there's no singular thing that but maybe the alcohol content is about the same as it was at the beginning, mm. but I think everything else has changed to some degree. Mm. Um, hop variety. Uh, I guess one thing that's similar from the beginning is because um, we kind of had this right from the get go is kind of color and mm -hmm. malt profile, I mm -hmm. guess. So it's lighter in color, um, but it's not a simple grain bill either. Uh, because you know, we didn't. We want the hops to be the showcase for sure. So we didn't mm -hmm. necessarily want something like caramel sweetness to pull away from that. Yeah. Um, at the same time, you know, just using simple base malt alone, like two row barley alone, would not have given the backbone that it needed to kind of stand up to all those hops. Right. So um, I forget exactly what our original grain bill was, but that probably hasn't changed as much as the hop varietal stuff did. You know, we use uh, a couple. Of, we use wheat. Uh, unmalted wheat in it. We use oats in there. We use carapils. I think all of those were in there in the initial batches, if I remember correctly. Yeah, everything aside from the Munich malt. The Munich malt, that's mm. right. Um, that was added later. And that was based on feedback, really. Yep. That's um, cool. Both conversations and, and the draft lab feedback. Yeah, thinking of the feedback, too, because we get you know, in marketing, we have, we'll present something and we'll get feedback from various different people. And I feel like it is really interesting when you, when you give us a, a particular thing to a wide variety of people, you tend to get very varying feedback, but you also tend to find some like little, you know, rivers of feedback that like r resonate with each other where you're like, okay, there's like four people saying the same exact thing that they're either really liking or really dis. And so it's like, you can start to pick some actually like really, I feel like tangible and helpful stuff out of even that kind of scattershot amount of feedback. Yeah, you're going to get that with any beer you put on tap, totally. whether it's an IPA or, or especially with beers that we brew on the pilot scale that use more unusual uh, yeah. ingredients. Yep. Uh, you'll get comments of, this is too much of this, or this is too little of this with the same beer. Yeah. Right. It's right, like, right. How do we then move forward with this? Like, <laughs> I know what I like, <laughs> but how do we please everyone? And that's the thing. You're yeah. not going to please everyone with... with um, I guess beers in general, but we saw that sort of feedback for the IPAs for sure. Not yeah. the, even the ones that we've moved on from round to round. It wasn't as if those were just uh, there. There were for for every beer that we had done, uh, there was some dislikes. You know, totally um, for for some particular reason. Um, so that was, I guess, another potential challenge in it all is making sure that. We're utilizing all the feedback that we get appropriately and uh, moving forward with that, making adjustments based on that. So, Totally. I remember having, I think we had this conversation. I had this conversation with a couple of people as we were trying uh, the different trials, but I think like it was the ultimate thing of like, I might like this, but I kind of want like me as Brett wants you, the brewers and the team working on this to like kind of go for it do something different and bold and like that you're really pumped up about that might not appeal to everyone, even off staff, you know, like I think that was kind of where I was coming from. And I really feel like this beer does that not to say that it's like, you know, unbalanced or any other way, but I feel like it was just a fun thing for me to be like, I've said my piece and now I want you to do what you as experts are really pumped about. And I feel like that's where we, uh, where we ended up. 
Yeah, well, there. I, I don't think Jason said it uh, earlier. There were three really main descriptors from an aroma perspective right. that we were looking to hit, uh, and that was pine, tropical, citrus. Mm. And you know, all along the way, this is what we were communicating to people: like, this is these are the elements that we yeah. want, and we don't want them to the point where one is kind of overtaking the other. We wanted more so uh, like a balanced uh, a balance of all three. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess fast forwarding a little bit, uh, once the, uh, once we were towards the end of this project, we put the, the final selected beer on our description panel. So people are going into, you know, these, these rooms that are controlled in terms of like temperature and like there's all the walls are white and, uh, they're, they're, they're being, <laughs> they're locked in, <laughs> you know, a couple of days, padded walls, we throw them fish heads, um, <laughs> <laughs> Only sardines, though. Only right? sardines. Yeah. <laughs> in oil. Um, in oil. We're very nice. Yeah, that sounds great, actually. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so so people are in there. Basically, they're, they're tasting a beer without knowing what it is. Yes. Uh, I mean, sometimes they do just based on, you know, with, if, with, with this beer in particular, it's kind of hard to not know that it was an IPA. But yeah. um, out of that description panel, Uh, So people are tasting the beer and then selecting certain aromatic uh, descriptors Mm -hmm. uh, to describe it, as well as color and flavor and all that. Uh, And in the end, uh, the three descriptors, so the leading ones, uh, which tend to be uh, weighted in a sense, so whatever the description is, whatever it starts with, that is the the element that was called out the most. Mm -hmm. And it was like citrus, tropical, pine. Yeah. And it was the greatest feeling ever to <laughs> see those final results Nailed tasted it. on a blind yeah. panel uh, <laughs> and having those reflect our original intention for yeah. the beer. So That's awesome. Um, I don't even know if there's a question to begin with. No, here, that's, but, that's a great. Uh, I, I'm pretty awesome. pleased. And when I saw that, it was just, it was, it was the best feeling ever. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like, do we want to talk a little bit about the final result and yes. you know what it tastes like and you know we just sort of discussed the aromas but color and where we landed on ABV I think from a marketing uh, perspective it was really fun to watch this process and we were sort of parallel pathing branding yeah. Yeah. of this beer at the same time and I felt like there's like a lot of check-ins along the way of like oh is it going to be tropical because we're going to reflect that in the branding or is it going to be this because it's going to have to you know yeah. it was a really interesting project from a few different angles but yeah Jason want to tell us a little bit about yeah totally I, and I agree with you Liz it was another kind of cool part of this project was that, that how we had we had the beer development process happening and then you know the marketing sales team was working on branding and, and label development and so on but they're not in a vacuum they were kind of parallel projects, totally. which is kind of fun and back and forth conversations throughout so um patrick and i are dr- having a little sip of this beer and yes it is 9 30 in the morning but <laughs> we work in breweries and so that's what We're we professionals. do yeah, this yeah. is yeah. the job this is, a, this is a sensory yeah. experience yeah. here exactly um so yeah we you know we uh, chavez talked a little bit about what those key hop uh, aromatic compounds were but you know again we were looking for something that was i, I think i'm stealing this from from zach boda our quality mm-hmm. manager something timeless is a nice way to describe yeah. what our target was here is something that people are going to love now and people would have loved five years ago and will love five years from now. So, sure. um, and with that, we wanted, you know, aggressive, you know, dominant, maybe aggressive is not the right word, but mm-hmm. a, a intense hop aroma, but not, you know, not something that something that's still balanced and drinkable and right. so on and so forth. And I think we really achieved that. Um, 6.8% is where we landed from an alcohol perspective. So for me, that, it uh, falls in a nice range where you're getting you're getting some of the kind of structure and, and texture of, of a higher alcohol beer that helps to kind of compete with the hop aroma. Yep. But you're not pushing into this like ethanol focused, you know, really overly warming, which, you know, has its place in certain beers. But sure. in, in a beer like this, you know, it's something we wanted somebody, you know, if they could do so safely to have several of um, <laughs> and, and enjoy them um, and not feel overwhelmed by that ethanol character. So pretty happy with where that is. You know, we talked a little bit about, you know, a balance of, um, from the malt perspective, we've got oats in there. We've got um, some, a bunch of local grain in there, both oats, uh, wheat, and barley. Mm-hmm. And then, um, so ni- nice blend of um, grains. And then, yeah, we just really hit, like, nice yeah. nice, nice bitterness uh, in there as well. Yep. Um, good balance of citrus, tropical, pine. Mm-hmm. Super duper happy with how it turned out. 
Yeah, it is amazing to me how like it it feels really like a reflection of Allagash. It is yeah. such a balanced beer, but interesting and complex at the same time, and super easy to drink. And so I don't like. I am so impressed as to where we landed. Yeah, on that beer. You know, at hop aroma aside, and I think it's killer. I love where it's at. I think my favorite part of the beer is how like clean the finish is. Yeah, like it just makes me want to sip it again and again and again, and then all of a sudden it's gone. It's like, how did I drink that beer so fast? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's yeah, I, I don't know. And I I, th- I think the bitterness that bitterness is something we talked a lot about. Yeah, right? sure. like if you think about the range of bitterness uh, uh, over time, especially with IPAs, you know, you had almost had the IBU race right. uh, of, you know, whatever, 10, 15 years ago and people bragging about how bitter their beers were and so on. And then now there's some IPAs out there that are really low bitterness. Um, and, you know, for us, we really felt like you you need you need some there. You need a little bit yeah. that, crisp, that crispness. And I think that's where that finish comes, that, the clean finish, but also there's a crispness there that really makes you want to drink a little bit more. But it's not, you know, you're not puckering up. Mm-hmm. You don't get the Keystone bitter beer face. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did I just date myself with that right yeah. there? <laughs> no, I know about that. Patrick, you also reminded me, thinking of the finish of this beer, it is funny because I had um, some friends over, like, the past weekend, um, and we were having one of our beers named Two Lights. And I feel like that is a beer where it starts in a certain way of it's, – it's brewed with Sauvignon Blanc must. It's a really interesting process. But it starts out where, like, you kind of get a flavor – and it goes to a certain level of intensity, and then it just disappears in, like, the best possible way. It just kind of evaporates on your tongue. And my friend, like, kind of unprompted was like, man, this beer, like, where does, like, it, I love how it finishes. Like, he just was commenting on that, and I feel like this does a very similar thing. And it's a similar thing among so many of our beers in that, like, it takes, it, it gives you this amount of flavor, but then it's not that cloying, lasting, lingering thing that where when you get three quarters of the way through the can, you're kind of like, uh do I really want to finish this thing? It's, it is that kind of like, where did it go <laughs> situation. So, uh, yeah, congratulations. I'm, I'm happy to hear that because <laughs> we did make one slight tweak to the Two Lights recipe, and oh. I think it helped with that uh, that finish in yeah. particular. This, I mean, this this year I would say some of the beers, like Two Lights has been my favorite version. I think that we've brewed of it. Haunted House I think is actually my favorite that we've ever done, and I've certainly liked a lot of the Haunted Houses we've <laughs> done. So uh, guys are guys are crushing it. We it's make good fun. beer. <laughs> make good beer. Yeah, we uh, we'll do a couple more episodes as it relates to Hop Reach. So certainly stick around, and listen to those. This beer is going to come out January twenty twenty three. Yeah, we are maybe brewing one or one more batch before the real deal, um, which will happen in December. We'll uh, we'll be capturing some of that and and sharing it out on the social medias. Um, and then, yeah, it'll start shipping out nationwide early next year. So we are super excited about it, and we hope you will like it. Yes. You're going to like it. Because it's <laughs> so gonna, good. You're going to like it. <laughs> Thank you, mm-hmm. Jason, Patrick. Sure. Awesome to have you. Thanks for having us. Very fun. Yeah. Happy to do it. Yeah. This has been an Allagash Brewing production. If you have something you want us to talk about on the show, shoot us a message at podcast at allagash.com. And thanks, as always, for listening. 